All right, this is probably going to be a dog's breakfast of a video, but um, I was actually just um, at the war table over there, just just knocked my socks off when I realized that, um, in an odd way, I've been like that battle there, the Boog River Bridge, and I was just looking at it, and I'm realizing, holy smokes, there's a possibility the Austro-Hungarians are going to be able to take that bridge uh, next turn, not this turn, but next turn, and then I was like, oh, um, I was looking at it long, you know, I mean, anyways, you'll see, uh, or I'm going to expand on it, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then I realized the Russians don't want to also give that spot up, because, it, uh, like, uh, I'm going to have to do a separate video. Um, it is just so key to getting the Lemberg, as far as I'm concerned. And I was like, oh, and I was like, you know what, this is, they're going to have to bring in troops. It's going to be an epic effing battle, uh, last, probably the very last turn, uh, because the Central Powers will, will be going last. Um, and I was thinking, oh, you're getting, you know, you're a bit more, a bit melodramatic. I'm like, no, wait a minute here. That battle, game-wise, has been going on since, oh my gosh, um, what, late August? Le okay, let's say early September 1914. And it's been back, I mean, the Austro-Hungarians were across the bridge, for Christ's sakes, and wrapped around that river. It's been back and forth, back and forth. And then they pulled a, just something right out of, out of, you know, out of uh, whatever, um, they built, they were able to entrench, they were able to stay, uh, stay out, you know, not get the Russians to, uh, the Russians are on the other side, man, I think, I'm pretty damn sure they were, yeah, yeah, very quickly, that's right, it was like, anyway, so, like, uh, that's another thing I'm going to try to do, is go take a look at my journal uh, stuff, because I've got it all written down, any hoots, I've been playing that game, that battle, in real life, for over two years, so, like, I'm not making melodramatic. I'm like, holy cow, this is going to be a biggie. All right, so I was organizing my books. I went, um, I had to go, uh, well, I didn't have to, well, I more or less, probably, I'm sure, uh, co-workers would be happy. Uh, I went to um, buy some soap, but I'm not into mass-produced soap, so I had to go to uh, a local uh, store where you know, I can buy charcoal soap and all that crazy nonsense for about, you know, 20 times the price of mass-produced, but... Hey, dude, you want to buy your charcoal soap? Off you go. So uh, it was relatively close to the um, Value Village. So I'm like, well, you might as well go and take a look to see if there's any books. There were some books, a lot, well, a lot more than normal. Um, and I wasn't going to do a video, to be honest with you, about them. I was like, I'm not going to drive people nuts about videos every five seconds about books. I buy books all the fucking time, man. It's like I'm bad. Um, Anyways, they got, uh, I picked up um, these little battle tour, uh, I don't need, like I said, I, this is going to be a dog's breakfast and a half, and it's not even about these books, it's something down there. Uh, Nigel Cave, he does these battleground, uh, like a battle tour things. There are other people do them as well, I think, maybe they're Osprey? Nope, Pen and Sword, oh, I love them. Uh, anyways, I picked up these two, uh, uh, Hill 60 and Passchendaele, uh, I think both, well, it's this battle uh, for the, for Ypres around that area. Um, I picked this one up um, in my micro mini uh, library that I have at work with um, um, uh, somebody who's from Bulgaria and he knows a ton of stuff about, well he's got tons of books on war stuff and that was one of them that uh, he um, lent me in the library kind of thing so I, I picked that up that was there. What else did I snag? Oh my gosh, I thought this was kind of neat. I was actually thinking of uh, Hex to Hex when I saw it, uh, the family Romanov. Um, yeah, I picked that up. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm happy. And then I was like, oh, there's probably, oh my God, it's this one actually. I'm so glad I mentioned it. it. What the hell, man? Okay, so I've had this for quite a long time. I think I've mentioned it to people that uh, it was kind of like my, well, I can't afford the super expensive Ottoman one that I want to get. I just found out yesterday, because I'll have to go and take a look at that person's uh, name who was asking about Dravelt Krieg and, and um, was mentioning, hey, I can probably get those uh, books that you're look, you're thinking about um, on my uni university library, so on and so forth, by Edward J. Erickson. Earth Calling. So this is kind of maybe like the cheap version of his own, and I was even saying back in the day, when I picked this up, I was like, oh, I think this is kind of like a cheap version of that guy's 
I didn't know they were the same author. Jesus H. Murphy. But I do want to get that other one. Uh, it's less expensive. Hold on, puss. Uh, the other one was... It was a bit more specific. It, it uh, was called something about like uh, Ottoman effectiveness in uh, World War One in Mesopotamia, something like that. And I was like, oh, ooh. That, like, yeah, 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 please. Um, anyways, you can see I'm kind of still trying to organize the uh, the books. I've got up, up, upstairs here. It's still, like I said, I still have to kind of separate them. It's more um, general or like artillery or cavalry of World War One, like that type of stuff, or specific battles. But I would like, I'm getting, it, it's, I have to squeeze too many, too much stuff in one shelf and it's not working. This is my, I think I've mentioned it before, this is more like a, um, doesn't mean it has to be World War One. There's a lot of not uh, specific World War One stuff, but I would call this more like, not really my favorite, some of it is, but it's more of a, um, I don't know, high end, but like I said, there's like, you know, a diplomatic uh, history of World War One, the road, road less traveled, that uh, 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 the attempt to try to stop the war, 1915-16, uh, I do believe, um, that type of stuff, you get, or pre-World War One or whatever, or, or, or after you get it. It's more like uh, technology type stuff, so you probably find my, like my aircraft, rail, ships, all that nonsense. Uh, Canadiana, uh, reference material, reference material, I just love you to bits. Oh, Braevich. Oh, sorry, man. Uh, this is more like a, um, I, I don't know what, what yet, kind of like a, you know, well, I've got the cookbook, the Great War cookbook, uh, terminology stuff. I actually picked up this guy. I know it's not uh, World War One specific, but tough. Uh, not enough room to swing a cat, uh, naval slang, and it's everyday usage. I was like, yep, you're coming home. This is the book I want to show you. Uh, and like I said, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see it. God darn it, I hope so. You know what? I'm going to have to move the camera. That's what I'm going to have to do. Hold on here. I'm going to put this here because otherwise I'm not going to be able to see what I'm like. What I, and I really want you guys to see this. It's a sweetie. Hold on. I'm just going to move all this stuff. All right. Oh. Okay, so that way I can look. All right. So this book, I thought, eh, I, I like I said, I didn't really. Um, I was just like, okay, it says World War One. You're coming home. And then I quickly flipped it, uh, flipped through it, and I was like, wow, this looks really good. And I want to show it to people. Hold on here. I haven't. Uh, um, oh, here I'm gonna do this. Do this before an over, over the arm thing or something. But it looks, uh, it's called uh, First World War by Robin, Robin Pryor and Trevor Wilson. Um, yeah, I, I gotta hope to God his watch stops. Jesus. Um, hold on here. But it doesn't matter, they went over anyways. Even when they didn't hear the artillery sometimes. Holy shit, eh? I was just I just found that out about the Battle of Vimy Ridge, the fourth uh, Canadian division. They were uh, like, um, aren't we supposed to have some supporting artillery fire first? <laughs> didn't happen. They're like, they waited a minute. Didn't happen. Another minute. Didn't happen. And then the whistle started the blow, man. And you know what that meant. But then I'm also yet again, I'm finding out about the relief of Kut now. And I'm, uh, you know, reading or listening to stuff and finding out about... Um, Oh, you know, they, they just uh, weren't able to get the artillery support up there and so on and so forth. But they were ha they had to go in and, you know, they were just getting decimated by the machine guns. It had no, no, uh, they couldn't even build proper trenches for Christ's sakes over there. It was just like, oof. as far as I know, like I said before, don't ever listen to me and uh, get whatever. But here, I'm going to do a flippy bits or something, but it looks... Yeah, I was not expecting this. I don't know what the hell I was expecting. I certainly wasn't expecting um, this. This looks really darn good. Like it's got like a, I guess like a little bit of everything, you know. Yeah, I want to find out more about that. Um, like what the hell was he saying? I was reading or watching or something. I can't remember where the hell it was. But um, I have to start taking better notes. Um, and uh, the British guy was just saying, for Christ's sakes, man, maybe it was uh, Indy Nidell. 
Um, you know, if it wasn't for those effing machine guns, <laughs> we could kick their arse because we had like, you know, 10 times the amount of people. But uh, it didn't matter. Oh my gosh, yeah. And then the, uh, oh, sorry. Just my, my head is just exploding with uh, stuff that's been going on. Uh, right now, anyways, in 1916, it's just like, holy smokes, like, the Germans are reclaiming all the flipping territory that the Russians took up, uh, um, you know, up near Riga and the, and the Vinsk region, and it's like, all oh, that effort, you know, before uh, it started to thaw, and, oh, that's out the window, all that stuff, and oh my god, I found out that Rick Tolfin and, um, Billy Bishop were both at the Battle of uh, Vimy Ridge, which I did not know. And then I just also found out on a side note, uh, a ton of stuff that was a monster eye opener and the person just like, super quick, Bob a trick. It was like, thank you, um, about the Easter Rising. I was just absolutely stunned. Dan, David O'Duffy or Danny O'Duffy, but uh, he was on um, Clark Commando in 1983's uh, show. And I was just like, whoa, thank you. Oh my God, there's Vimy. Yep. Okay, that's it. I'm being an idiot, I know. Okay, see ya.